I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. But it's Dr. Roto. Get out the insurance cards. Get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. So today I'm going to do a little mishmash. Uh, fantasy baseball for you. Talk of some Brewers, talk some Otani, uh, talk some Mets. Who knows what we'll talk about. We'll, we'll definitely be fan- doing some fantasy baseball. I will do a Super Bowl podcast on Friday. And I'll wrap up a Super Bowl podcast on Monday. And that'll be the end of football for quite some time. Maybe talk about a player or two in the draft. But uh, that's about it. So we are moving heavily into baseball season. I have my first baseball draft underway, as you all know. I am now in round 21 of a 29-round draft. This one is taking forever and a day. I have the worst patience known to mankind. But uh, I thought it would be a good time to talk about Otani. So if you don't know who I'm talking about, you probably should. Shohei Otani from Japan is going to be something that we've never seen before in Major League Baseball. This guy's a pitcher who can also hit. And the problem is, we can't let him be one guy. He almost has to be two guys. So let's break down Otani the pitcher, Otani the hitter, and then what your leagues can and should do. So first of all, Otani's an absolutely stud pitcher. This guy regularly hits 100 miles an hour. Now, he is dealing with issues with his UCL. He has a sprain of his UCL. I mean, we don't know if it's Tommy John surgery going to happen yet, but there's a sprain of the UCL. But the Angels aren't worried about that. They're going to use him most likely in a six-man rotation. Okay? I don't think he pitches more than once a week. And they've already said there will be 160 innings as a limit for him. Now, they're not going to limit his pitches. They're going to limit his innings, which I'm okay with. I don't want them going, oh, 82 pitches, we're pulling them. You know, they're going to let this guy pitch, but they're going to limit him to 160 innings. I think that's a very fair number, and I think that's the expectation. So, Otani, the pitcher, is probably an SP2 at best, SP3 at worst. That's my expectation of how good he is as a pitcher. I don't know if he's a one, but he certainly could be a two, and he's absolutely a three. Absolutely a three, but I think we could do better. I think he could be closer to a two. As a hitter, he's got a lot of ability. Now, he wants the opportunity to hit more. He's got a huge slugging percentage, at least in Japan. It was like over 500. The guy had 48 home runs, hit over 285, so this guy can hit. What's going to happen with the Angels, and one of the reasons why he wanted to go to an American League club, is he wanted to basically hit a couple times a week and pitch once a week. He wanted to do both. Good for him. I think what you're going to see with the Angels, for example, pitch Monday, sit Tuesday, maybe sit Wednesday, play Thursday, play Friday, maybe Saturday, sit Sunday, start it over again. So I think you're looking at one start per week and two to three games per week as a utility player. Not going to play the outfield, going to play DH. So what do you do? Well, your league has to make a determination. So right now, if there are any commissioners out there, your league has to make a determination. Now, the league that I'm playing in, I believe, wants to decide whether before the year, whether he's a hitter or a pitcher. I don't know if that's fair. I'm not sure that that's fair. I think you can use him as both, in my opinion, if before the week starts, you say, look, this week, he's my pitcher. Next week, he's my hitter. Pitcher, hitter, pitcher, hitter, pitcher, hitter. That's on you. You decide, but you can't get both. You can't get both. You can get one, you can get the other, but you can't get both. Now, some leagues may force you to make a choice. If I had to choose, I would choose pitcher. 
because I know he's going to get 160 innings. I don't know how he's going to hit. I don't know what it's going to be like hitting sliders and screwballs and split, split, fingered fa- split fingered fastballs. I don't know. So I think I'm going to go with pitcher if I have to choose one, but I don't want to choose one. I don't want to have to choose. I want to be able to choose each week, not for the season. Okay? And that way, now, if you're in a daily moves league, I think you should be able to play Otani wherever you want. Monday a pitcher, Tuesday a hitter, Wednesday a hitter, Friday a pitcher. That's on you, daily moves league. So Otani is very advantageous in a daily moves league. In a weekly moves league, which I prefer, I'm going to make a decision before the week starts. I think that's the fairest way to deal with it. Okay? So if you have any questions about that, let me know and I'll walk you through it. But that is what I think is the fairest way to deal with Otani. Okay. Next, I want to get to the Brewers. The Brewers just signed Lorenzo Cain. Five years, $80 million. That's a big old contract. Now, I like Lorenzo Cain, but he doesn't always stay healthy. Since 2010, he's had one, two years of over 500 at-bats. So I think he's a real good fit for Milwaukee. Could hit 15, 16 home runs. Could steal 25, 30 bases. That I like. I just don't know if he can stay healthy. And the thing is, right now, Milwaukee has one player too many. So they have Thames and Villar and Shaw and Arcia, Yelich now, Kane and Braun. Where's Domingo Santana fit in? On the bench? So they're going to trade somebody. Are they going to trade Braun? Are they going to trade Thames? Are they going to trade Santana? I don't think we know. But I know they need a starting pitcher. Because when your pitching staff is Chase Anderson, Zach Davis, and Jules Chassin, you're in big trouble. Because you got Giovanni Gallardo, Junior Guerra, you got a lot of crap at the end of that rotation. And you're not going to be able to win, even though your offense is good. So they're probably going to have to give up Braun or Santana for a legit number two starter, move Davies to three, pray Jimmy Nelson comes back, and then you got a shot. So I do like the Brewers offensively this year. I think they're a good buy. I like Shaw. I think he's got sneaky speed. I think Arcia, really good player. Really good player. Last year, the guy had 15 home runs and 14 stolen bases. I think he'd go 15 home runs and 20 stolen bases this year. Why not? Braun? Braun said, hey, he's willing to play second, first, whatever you need. What do I love about that? He wants to stay in Milwaukee. He sees that something is good there in Milwaukee and something is good. And he wants to do whatever he can to stay there. I hope he does. I'd like to see Ryan Braun retire as a brewer. I mean, I like Domingo Santana too, but I really, I mean, I know he's younger, but I think Ryan Braun is still the safer player. And if I have a two-year window, if I have a two-year window, I think it's really close, but I think Braun is still the better player for the next year or two. Now, moving forward, I think Domingo Santana is a much better player. Guy's 25 years old. I mean, really, he can hit, he can run, he can do everything. You know, can he hit for average? Did last year, hit 278 last year, so I'm not dying to move him. So I don't know whether they needed Kane, but Kane fits. What this team really needs is a DH. They need to be the Milwaukee Brewers of the American League, not of the National League. Could you move Braun to first base and get rid of Eric Thames? I'm all right with that, too. I probably would do that. I'm okay with that. I don't think Thames is that special. I think he got off to a hot start last year, and, you know, then he tapered off. He's a good player. Not great. He's good. All right, but but I'm naming a lot of guys that I like there in Milwaukee, so I think they are very, very interesting. All right, for the Mets. The Mets still want to get... Todd Frazier, I mean, sorry, they want to get Todd Frazier, and they want to get Josh Harrison, and they want to make moves. But so far, the Mets haven't done anything. So with the Mets, you've got to wait and see. I don't think the Mets roster we see now will be the Mets roster we see come opening day. They still will make moves. I don't know what these moves are, but I know they can't go with what they have now. So let's watch that closely. So moves for, uh, for the Braves here. First of all, the Braves... Ronald Acuna says he might start the season in the minors. So let's talk about Ronald Acuna. How good is he? He is really, really good. But he's 20 years old. 
He is a great prospect. But let's be very careful about something. So I want to talk to you about something that Adam Ronas and I touched upon in today's show. Okuna went in round eight in the FSTA draft. Guys that went after him, Polanco, Rosario, Enciarte, Desmond, Margot, Odebel Herrera, Adam Eaton. I would have taken any of these guys first. Any of these guys I would have taken over Acuna. Do you know why? How much baseball has he played? Uh, that's right. He hasn't. Just because you're a star in the minor leagues doesn't mean that it translates to the major leagues. People need to be aware of that. I love this kid's potential. It's immense. It is immense. And I get that. That said, is he going to steal 50 bases this year? Is he going to hit 20 home runs? I don't think so. People always like to be a year ahead on the rookies. We always want to be the guys, I got Ronald Acuna when he was a rookie. I don't want Ronald Acuna when he's a rookie. I want him when he's 23, when he's a top five outfielder in baseball. You want him now to say that you had him. I want him in two years when I know he's going to be great. You see the difference? I'm going to win my league in two years. You may not win your league this year because you have Acuna before he's ripe. Think of minor league baseball players like fruit. Do you like unripe fruit? Who does? Why do you want a guy too soon? You want the piece of fruit at the right time. When it's luscious and delicious. Acuna is going to be a really great player. It just probably won't be this year. But people will want to draft him. People always love drafting guys like that. They want to be the first guy in their league to have had him. Great. Good for you. I want to be the last guy. I want to be the last guy in a year or two, making a trade, going for the win, getting a Kuna. And inevitably, whoever has a Kuna in your league right now, if it's a dynasty league, he's going to want 17 players, and rightfully so. If I were to dump my team at some point this season, I want a Kuna. That's the first phone call I make. And I'd offer two or three really good players to get a Kuna. And I hope that the other guy would take the deal. He probably shouldn't take the deal, but that'd be the deal I'd make. I'd want to get a Kuna first. That's the smart move. Doesn't always happen that way. But would it, does it, would it shock me if he started the year in the, in the minors? No. I think that's probably the right move. Let him go to the minors. Let him figure out to start the season hot. Let him be hitting 320 by Memorial Day. Bring him up and play him and let's be done with it. Let him get 10 home runs in the second half with 20 steals. That's a good little player. But he's not a star yet. Remember, I play for this year. I'm not playing for 2019. I'm still living in 2018. I may be dead in 2019. Who knows? Not that I wish that on myself, but I don't know where I'm going to be in a year. I know where I am right now. Right now, I'm on the podcast talking to you about this year. Don't tell me about being good in three years. Your league may not even be together in three years. You get my drift? Your league is together now. Try to win it now. That's the best advice I have. Win now. Worry about today, today. Worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay? You may may disband. Maybe somebody quits. Maybe your commissioner doesn't want to do it anymore. Who knows? So try to win today. So do I like Acuna? I do. Would I draft him? Absolutely. 11th round. Which tells me one thing. I'm not getting him. I know I'm not getting him. I'm okay with not getting him. I get it. I understand it. That's the decision I have to make. Here's a decision you have to make. What site to join? I'm telling you the best site to join is scoutdfs.com. Give you the best information to help you win in DFS. Optimizers, scout scores, podcasts, articles, videos. What more could you want? Scoutdfs.com. But right now it's time to put away the insurance cards. Put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. Back tomorrow. So much more. I'm Dr. Roto. Have a great one. Be well. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit ScoutFantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts!